What's good guys, today I'm really excited and that's because I think we're finally at a stage where we can get the digital dash working that I got a while ago. And the whole reason why I'm excited about this particular product is because it's something that works across the board with all ECU types, whether you've got a factory ECU and just an OBD network in your car, all the way up to Link, Haltech, aftermarket ECUs and things like that. And it has all the features that a lot of the big like $2,000, $1,500 uh, digital dashes have for those ECUs. but at like a 600 to 700 dollar price range depending like that's australian dollars so for like guys in america that'll be much cheaper but anyways um, i'll put links in the descriptions to all the different models they even work with power fc's which is just amazing um so yeah we did a whole bunch of troubleshooting we got a new cam bus board on there a whole bunch of other things with the image and stuff like that let's get in there let's plug it in check that it works and if it works i'll show you some of the cool features that this thing has All right, so you guys know the drill. You know where my ECU is. It's in the kick panel here. You see me take it out a thousand times. Uh, so let's throw you on the time lapse. We're gonna pull it all out. We're gonna install the CAN bus cable, which is just this little plug with two wires. Make sure that's installed in there. Put it all back in, and uh, then we'll start testing the digital dash from there. Let's go. Okay, so I am pretty excited right now. Um, I figured I'd test everything just before I put the kick panel and everything on there to make sure everything was connected properly. We got the digital dash here. I'm in the Raspberry Pi uh, Linux OS right now, command prompt, as you can see here. We're gonna do a CAN dump, which is gonna show us if we're receiving data from the ECU and the car. So we're gonna just go do a CAN dump on the device CAN0, and boom. This is all the data that's coming through right now. Hopefully you guys can see this. So that means that this is communicating perfectly fine with the ECU. We were not getting that before. So this is really good news. Um, the digital dash doesn't work just yet though. I need to renew the license with them. So they're gonna send me the new license to install and then this will then, everything will work. Oh man, I'm so excited. I don't even know what to say. Okay, so I got everything back and installed, looking great. Just got the CAN bus cable kind of coming out there for the um, digital dash, waiting for the guys to give me the new license for that. For now though, I wanted to show you guys these. I got Okachan two of these wheel and tire dollies. I also got one for myself, um, but they had these at Costco for like 20 bucks a pop. And Okachan always has these big stacks of wheels and tires. And whenever he needs to move them, he has to take them two at a time, you know, one on each hand and move them all around. And I figured this will help him a lot. Um, so good on you Costco for having something so awesome for mechanics and car guys uh, and I got one as well so I can move wheels around out in the backyard um, but anyways we're gonna go head to Okachan's hang out with him give him those and uh, see what else we get up to today hopefully we get that license and get that dash working by the end of today I want to show you some of the cool features on it all right so I got the guys team viewed in they're installing the new license right now and then uh, we should be able to test the digital dash and make sure everything works okay so the guys are done we just rebooted it let's see what are the results? It's loading. Oh, it's working. Oh my gosh, there's my RPMs. There's my boost, my knock, my external coolant temp, my IATs and in uh, sorry, intake air temps. Oh, that's so cool. And it's so instant too. It like matches up with everything in the Link ECU. Man, this is so cool. Okay, uh, I need something to try and rev the engine because it's so far away. I can't reach the accelerator. Hang on. Maybe I can use my steering wheel. This is a bit ghetto, but hey, we can reach it now. Let's watch. That's cool. <laughs> oh man, I'm so happy. So, let me show you some of the cool things about this dash. So you can program a whole bunch of things. It also has GoPro integration. Um, you just It's a touch screen, so you can just swipe it across. You can look at the external um, coolant temps and everything on this screen, and you can adjust and make put here whatever you want. Hang on, let's get rid of this Link uh, USB cable. Everyone can see what I keep in my uh, my glove box, pair of gloves, chewing gum, battery jump pack. Um, so yeah, you can change and have like different profiles set uh, for each page. And yeah, it's really useful obviously. All your settings are here. You can set up your GoPro Hero thing here um, because there's Wi-Fi built into this. So you can connect to your internet and everything with it. Um, it, it really is so handy. Um, this is where you configure your dash. This is where you can set up all the other new features that are coming, like accelerometer, gyro sensors, pressure sensors, all these extra sensors that you can connect into this as well. Um, and this will also eventually have GPS and things like that on here. Um, 
These are your speed correction calculators and stuff like that. Um, you can also set up certain warnings for certain gears and stuff. So like, you know, your RPM limit. Um, there's the RPM limit there, shift lights. Uh, dash config, so this is where you can set all your maximums and stuff like that. So it starts flashing at you and giving you alerts when something's not right. Um, man, this thing, like, and the best thing is, is this is always gonna keep getting updated. So you wanna always just like hang out and get all the stuff. And like this Dash 2 is all customizable. They'll be releasing new versions and you can customize it yourself. Um, it really is awesome. Like, man, I can't believe that. That is so cool. All right, I'm gonna go help May now. And then we're gonna go visit Okachan because it's getting late. It's like 2 p.m. I told May I'd only be 30 minutes and it's been like an hour and a half now. So let's go. Made it to Yashio factory. It's a lot darker than we expected. Uh, ended up hanging out with May going on a kind of like a dinner date, lunch date. Dropped off his uh, little wheel dollies. Serena's car's in, getting work done. I think she's getting a, a turbo swapped out or something. Um, but her clutch also blew up at the last drift event, so. Oh man, these RGs look so nice. Anyways, Okachan's becoming a YouTuber, like literally. Check this out. <laughs> He's got himself a stabilizer and everything. So uh, when he creates a channel, I'll make sure I uh, let you guys know. Okajan doesn't know this yet, but we're going to give him one of the Summit merch stickers and we're going to get his reaction. Which is probably going to be bad because it's not a Sylvia. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not there. This is uh, no Sylvia. <laughs> Skyline. No good. <laughs> Your English is amazing. Only Sylvia. <laughs> Only Sylvia. <laughs> Only Sylvia. <laughs> Okay, so time warping ahead. I'm a terrible vlogger, um, but not really. We were just all sitting down and talking a bunch of stuff and competing and wanting to do more stuff here in Japan with Okachan. And now we're heading out to dinner. May's with us as well. Um, so yeah, dinner with Okachan. He's driving this Fiat right now. He keeps buying these small cars to test and he just every now and then he switches and trades them because uh, he wants to find a really nice small car that he wants to kind of tune and work on and then like, you know, make a cool little race grip car out of. So he just got rid of the Rally Art little uh, Colt and now he's got himself this Fiat. Um, I, I really hope he doesn't stick with the Fiat because they're kind of an ugly car. Um, but yeah, dinner with Okachan, let's go. All right, so it is the next day. You can probably tell because there's light around. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't really film much of dinner. We just kind of had like a super intense, like deep talk. Um, and then uh, Okachan was uh, telling me about a couple cars he had in storage and one that might be particularly of my interest. Um, as you guys know, I am uh, wanting to get an S15 shortly. Another really cool thing is Okachan gave me one of his old GoPros that he didn't need anymore. So I'm really pumped about getting this because then I can set this up on somewhere on the outside of the car, run a wire to the engine bay with a mic and get you guys some really cool like turbo sounds and engine sounds while I'm driving and some more angles and stuff like that. Um, there's also another camera that I'm gonna be getting shortly as well, which means I'll have two GoPros and one normal vlogging camera. Um, but anyways, for the rest of today, oh, also, he hooked me up this super sweet hoodie, which is just absolutely awesome. This is kind of the quality of hoodie I wanna make uh, when I start doing like hoodies and clothes and merch and stuff like that for the channel. Check out the back of it too. Uh, uh, hopefully you can see that. Anyways, for the rest of this video, I figured I wanted to kind of like try and set up that dash a little bit better. So I've got the casing and everything that I've got to put back in there. Um, we're gonna put it in there. We're gonna set up the speed sensor and everything in the ECU so that that's telling the car, uh, the dash, like how fast I'm going. So ultimately I can cover up my speedo and RPM because the thing kind of sits in the middle and I can see like my fuel oil pressure and temp on either side of it. Um, but I obviously need to know how fast I'm going. So we need to make sure that the digital dash has all those signals from the link ECU to calculate that. So let's set that up, show you guys that, and then uh, we'll get to it, I guess. All right, so I've got the dash roughly where I want it to sit, probably a little bit further over this way and try and get it centered. Um, and uh, I've got the tuning laptop out and uh, in the link ECU settings here on the left hand side there's an option here for speed sources which is this window here and what you need to do is just go through here and select your speed source so for instance um, you can use left hand front right hand front left hand rear or right uh, right hand side rear um, for speed sensors like you know your ABS sensors now in my car 
I have the entire ABS system removed. The sensors are still there, but I don't have like the uh, ABS ECU in here anymore. So I'm not sure if the sensors went through the ECU before the ABS or they went through the ABS sensor before, uh, sorry, the ABS ECU before going into the, the normal ECU. So I'm not sure, I need to check that. Um, I think though, what I might be able to do is uh, hardwire it in, but for now, I'm just gonna see if any of these work. Okay, so I did a bunch of testing and um, went through and changed all the different sensors, but it's become apparent that I can't get the Speedo working until I manually wire in the sensor to the ECU. Um, and the reason for that is I have completely uh, remove the ABS computer, which is where those sensors run through, and then the ABS computer actually has an input into that ECU, which is on the digital input 3, DI3, left rear wheel speed sensor, which comes from the old ABS computer, which is no longer in the car. So I need to manually wire that sensor directly in, and then we should be fine. But for now, I'm gonna give up on getting speed working, um, and uh, I'll probably actually wrap up for the rest of today. There's a whole bunch of other features in here that I need to like look at on the computer for like customizing and making my own dash. I'd actually also really like to change uh, the boot up logo. So like if I, if I reboot this device, here we go, reboot. The logo that it boots up on is currently a rotary, which I think is kind of funny. Uh, it's cool, but it's also funny because um, Obviously, this is not a rotary car, um, but I think it's just the, the kind of cool startup animation. See, yeah, nice little rotary thing. So yeah, I wanna change that animation to something like maybe the Summit logo. Uh, but anyways, let's go inside and wrap this video up. Okay, so I know this vlog probably felt like it was all over the place, and that's because I feel like it was all over the place, and I promise next vlog, it will be on point and have a nice flow to it. Um, unfortunately, everything I planned for this video kind of fell through on its face. Um, after dinner with Okachan, we were supposed to go to a super secretive underground like Tokyo Drift style car meet. In fact, it's one that's like invite only and it's super rare for foreigners like myself to get access and be able to be invited to one of those things. And through a friend of a friend, they managed to you know talk to the owner and, and introduce me and get me to go get an invitation to come and film it. Um, but unfortunately, Police caught wind of it somehow, all the information leaked, and uh, they shut it down before it could even start. Um, so that was a big fall through, but they do multiple ones of these, and this is the first one that's ever been like shut down. So I'm really excited like in the future to go to another one, and these events aren't legal or anything, it's just the police will shut it down to prevent like, you know, uh, anyone misbehaving or just, you know, uh, obstruction to traffic and things like that um, but yeah like these car meets it, it was they're always like the Tokyo drift meets like multiple level car parks and stuff music playing everyone just chilling and hanging out with super baller cars um, so yeah it's something that I definitely want to show you guys and let you experience um, so hopefully in the future we can definitely get to one of those and show you the kind of culture and the things that happen there um, but yeah obviously didn't happen this time um, and then with the dash, like there is so much I need to figure out with that thing. Um, I did do a bunch of research on how to get the speedo working uh, from the R33, like uh, the speedo signal that comes from the gearbox. It actually goes straight to the cluster, doesn't go anywhere near the ECU. So I need to run a wire from the back of the cluster on a particular pin there to uh, a pin on the link ECU so that it can then get that same feed from the cluster. So I'll do that next weekend. Um, and there's a bunch of other wiring things I wanna tidy up in the car as well. So maybe we'll do that as well. Um, but yeah, otherwise, super excited about the dash. Uh, one of the coolest features that I'm excited to learn is the GoPro controllability and things like that on there. There's data logging. You can have multiple dashes and you just swipe across in whatever format you want, drifting, circuit, uh, normal day-to-day -day street stuff. Um, it would be super cool if we could like build a theme for it with all the Semit graphics and stuff like that. I'll talk to them about that. Uh, but there's some cool news that's gonna be coming out about the company that makes that soon for you guys, Powertune. Um, so I will um, keep you guys in the loop with what's gonna happen there, uh, but there is gonna be some really exciting news for you guys um, that we're in the middle of talking about. You know what I'm getting to. Anyways, I'm super pumped. Don't forget to get yourself a Semit sticker, semit.net, and I'll catch you all in the next video, guys. Ja mata ne. Ha ha ha,